Okay, and I'm just going to go a little bit into why we should be holding plastic manufacturers accountable. And when I say plastic manufacturers, they're the guys that produce the virgin plastic, the plastic pellets that get turned into the plastic water bottles and containers and bags that we use. So I'm going to be focusing on Formosa, which is a plastic company that's based in Taiwan. And recently they expanded their business to the US and to other countries. And they've had a huge environmental impact because of the amount of plastic pellets that are discarded into the environment. And you can see on the top left that a lot of these pellets end up in the water. And this is obviously because they weren't discarding them correctly. And not only is it harmful because they leach all these chemicals and microplastics into the water, which make recreational activities really unsafe, but in communities that rely heavily on the fishing industry, these pellets also kill a lot of their fish. And when Formosa first came to the US, they built their factories in Point Comfort, Texas, and Point Comfort was a coastal community, so it relied heavily on the fishing industry, and the residents ended up actually suing for most of them. And one of the reasons they brought up was because they were leaching these plastic pellets into the water and they were killing all their fish, and it was taking a huge financial toll on their fishermen, fishermen and fisherwomen. And there were similar claims back in Taiwan, but the government chose not to pay as much attention until it became a real, a really big concern all around the world, all around the world, and their concern was that there was mercury mercury pollution by all these plastic plants. And on the top right, you can see that there's also explosions and unsafe working conditions. This is an explosion back in 2005, and there it's it's caused by propylene and a mishandling of their chemicals being next to flammable materials. And this also opened up the debate for how safe plastic plants were as a working environment. And a lot of employees came up and they started reporting cases where employers would often neglect EPA regulations. And the EPA is an environmental protection agency. It's a governmental agency. And we're actually going to go more into that at our third webinar, which is next Thursday. But I'm just going to go over it really briefly and connect it back to plastic pollutants. So the EPA creates and enforces these legislations. And just like any other governmental agency, it does have flaws in it. For example, they don't do a lot of reliable testing. They're, it's not very frequent, and there's really easy ways for them to bypass testing. One of the things these employees or employers at Formosa did was when they were sent these um, tests to bring out clean water samples, instead of putting their actual dirty water and contaminated water into those samples, they would just fill it up with clean tap water. And that's what they would send, and that's what the EPA thought was coming out of these plastic plants, which obviously was not the case. And because of reasons like this, people started protesting against Formosa Plastics. And you can see on the bottom right, there is a Louisiana activist. She actually worked in the plastics industry for her entire career. And now she's turning her back on them, which really shows how harmful these industries are. And I chose to use this picture because in the back, you can also see two other companies. I'm gonna talk about Denka first. It, just going over it really briefly, it's a chemical manufacturing company and right now it's under scrutiny by local residents for not being up to EPA standards. And on the left is DuPont and DuPont produces, well it used to produce Teflon which was discontinued back in 2016 for containing the chemical PFOA which was linked back to birth defects and infant mortality and carcinogens and all these other health concerns. And DuPont actually knew this the entire time, they had records of it and they just chose not to display that to, the, to their consumers and they continue to market it as a safe product. And so there's a really good movie on this. It's called Dark Waters and it's starring Mark Ruffalo and Anne Hathaway. And you already know it's a good movie because it's starring those two actors, but it really goes into how authoritative these companies are and how easily it is for consumers to be fooled and think that the products they're using are safe for them when in reality it's Harm, um, harmful for, for the environment and for the human body. So one of the things they touch on is how the EPA and the FDA were not regularly testing the chemicals that were being sent out into the markets. The FDA is the Food and Drug Administration and what they mentioned was some chemicals had never been tested before they were sent out and some of them were tested on outdated scales and this resulted in a lot of un very harmful chemicals being released to consumers, and also the EPA lowering what they considered safe doses. That's not a good thing to hear for us to see that they're lowering what they consider safe. 
for humans to ingest. So just to go over everything, similarly to the criminal justice system, which is pretty prevalent now, there's a lot of other governmental agencies that are flawed, including the EPA and the FDA, and us as citizens and residents of local communities, it is our responsibility to make sure that we're not, we are holding these companies accountable, but also the governmental agencies not relying on them to protect our own health. Thank you. Okay. Guys, have any questions? You can um, ask I don't them. think you mentioned where to watch the movie. Oh, um, I don't think it's out on Netflix yet. I know it's on Amazon Prime. That's where I watched it. But you might need to rent it. Yeah. It's a good oh, movie. You should definitely go. So, uh, so what's um, the company the, 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 the plastic company what is it right now is it under like did they close it down or no um so i mentioned before that they got sued by their resident so the lawsuit actually got settled for 15 million dollars which is the largest citizen led lawsuit based on the clean water act that's the um that's how they pursued the lawsuit but okay. Because it's such a large company and it's po really powerful, and like I said, it has its businesses like all over the world, that actually didn't do that much damage to the company. It just kind of opened up to like, people like us to know that even like we, we hear about a lot of these companies producing a lot of plastic bottles and containers, but not a lot of us hear about where these materials are coming from, like their source. And it kind of opened up to the public what how important it was for us to keep in mind of that. So. No, for most of plastics is, is still in business and it's still pretty powerful. Yeah. And they have they changed their regulations after their confirmation? Yeah. Yeah. They did? Yeah. They try to be more sustainable, but like I said before, like the plastics industry itself is an unsustainable industry. So they might have like stopped trying to litter plastic pellets into the ocean, but just by making those pellets itself, it's releasing a lot of chemicals and like air pollution. And that you you really can't change that because it's like the makeup of the plastic unless you go into like changing the chemical makeup of the plastic itself and making it like more plant-based i'm going to go into that a little bit yeah a little bit later into the seminar yeah thank you yeah thanks for your question okay and there's also an faq that i listed in case anyone didn't have questions, but I just want to go over it really quickly because I thought it was interesting. So it says what familiar companies are leading plastic polluters. And this is based on like product manufacturers. So not the plastic pellet people, but like the, the bottles and the container people. And the top one is Coca-Cola. It's been on the top for a while. And then it's Nestle, PepsiCo. Unilever is um, a consumer product. So it, it actually is, it has a lot of sub companies under it like it's bought a ton of companies so it's it's a really expansive business and they're working on sustainability sorry they're working on sustainability but a lot of people just think because it owns so many businesses that it's really easy for them to pollute the environment so yeah okay. so um amber said thank you for informing me about the regulations and interesting details about the plastic industry Yes, thank you, Amber, for listening and everyone else.